And the three and our three companions are back in full force. I say still hasn't returned. He'll be back. Miss Fina, it has been several days. We cannot wait any longer. What are you suggesting, Meadows, huh? Just leave without him? I Menos is right, Fina. We cannot stay here. I don't know what time or what world lies ahead, but we have to go. Well, then go! Just leave without me. And Fina. I'm not going anywhere without I say. Miss Fina, Super Mario is assuredly... There's no point, Menos. She's made up her mind. We need to respect that. Hmm. Okay. We shall wait you beyond the border, Miss Fina. Let's go then. And they leave her behind. Kinda dark if you think about it. I say, where are you? Yeah, she hasn't eaten in a few days, too, so she's probably starving to death. But man, poor Fina, man. I say. Yep, it has been counted that Fina did uh, get um, sort of an affection, a love, as a word, towards our hero. And she can't be, uh, she can't admit, think the thought that he's gone. Either she is starving to death, or she just basically just didn't want to move on, I guess. But with that, though, time has reset itself. The Nabudu village is back. The Guardian of the forest is friendly towards the villagers. The Magalith is still existing to this very day, active, waiting for its next person to activate it. The Mammoths take on the bears, and the Mammoths win. Unlike in the original, where bears were better than the Mammoths. The war 50 years ago still goes on, and the prisoners try to use the box technique, and the guys are actually now smarter than themselves. With the Emperor and Dalkin walking out to greet its its villagers with victory. The traitor that helped us to get out of the field after 420 coins of usage is stuck in his own prison in the sewers. Oh, he did survive after all. He just passed out. But that was Mentos, and he uh, surveys the damage of the haunted forest. The scholars are now respecting Velvet as a particular figure of the school. She did make a future for herself after all. And Bibi's going after the prophet. Nee, nee, get away from me. Nee, nee. But you're so cute. Come with me. But the prophet of the present, the little child, is plotting. Plotting that the great disaster is still coming to pass. No matter what we did, the prophet still wants to do its bidding. And the three agents that tried to take us down is now manipulated by, I guess, the creature inside this tube for all of time, pressing the same few buttons every so often. And the pirates, they find themselves in the haunted forest with Jajardi, which ultimately we saw in the future that he did finally make some friends. And with the Tome of Ice gone, 
the Vikings never made it to never invaded the mainland and their normal land is now just a pure few pieces of ice melting slowly away and our heroes waiting for their next game to be revealed waiting those waiting their time in the endless forest And an old man found himself inside the anomaly, cleaning up all this dust. This dust will never go away. I feel like I've been at this forever. Oh, gnarly. And what's left of the demons, as well as Reno and Cherry and Plum, make their way back to Demonia. Hope we make Demonia a better place. And it's revealed that Menos and Velvet went to the past, back to the present time for them, and create a baby named Ceres. And Fina found a way to go back to the past to Professor Jiro's lab in the past. Yeah, this is the only time you see this art style with Professor Jiro's lab. And she is somehow able to come up with a way for us to return. So they can find so Fina at least has a happy ever after. And that is it, folks. That is the game of Evil Land 2. It's kind of cool and weirdly that the game, the story itself, evolves as long as the characters and the gameplay is doing. Like it starts out as a light-hearted adventure for two people to try to get back to the present time, only to find that there's more darker and serious tones as the game progresses. Menos learns about fate and understands how time can't really be changed. Fina re realizes that she needs to, you know, be a more stronger person and to, and to say, to basically to get itself some, you know, better uh, overall feelings for our hero. Velvet, again, I guess, moves on to to pursue more of her scientific research and actually eventually it becomes a, a figurehead for the school in the future. So it's kind of nice for her to get at least some sort of closure. As for the game self, I think the weakest character out of the bunch is Velvet. Velvet comes in too late in the story for it to be somewhat reasonable to let her have any growth. She's already understands what she needs to do. And I think the one character I think that has the strongest growth is Menos. He starts off as a person only thinking for himself and his people. On coming to understanding, he needs to save the entire multiverse, the multiple time periods, to basically make sure everyone has a bright future in the end, despite some sacrifices that have been made for the war in Pneumonia. As far as I say, this game is fun, it's great. There is still some stuttering that the game has, which is the game engine itself. If it was optimized, I think this would be better off for it, but this is a great sleeper hit. And if you haven't, and this game teaches you how to play some other game genres you may have never heard of before. So, I say I recommend this game 100%. There's just so much stuff to do, and the story is enduring to the end. Just like that. Vina brought everyone back, and the time loop resets. Oh, you're awake. Are you feeling better? I don't know. My father found you passed out deep in the forest. You don't remember anything? Not even your name? Maybe you should go into the forest. It could help you with your memory. Oh, and my name is Fina. I... I hope you remember everything quickly. And we get ourselves our ending title screen. And we did slightly better than our original run. The original run only gave us 75%. We got to 78%. <laughs> nice. At least we can see Fina and I say having a beach ball event. Velvet is just relaxing in the sun, enjoying ourselves. Meadows is probably in the water somewhere trying to catch some fish. That's probably what that fish is on the box is for. I really didn't put Mouse in this picture, though. Odd. But, 
I say this is, you know, pun on words, this is a great game. It's a sleeper hit, and it's mostly part of the uh, Evil Land collection. And since you could get this and Evil Land 1 in the same box, people basically buy this um, collection just for Evil Land 2. Evil Land 1 goes on as a sort of a, sort of like a pitch, you know, trying to get things off the ground for the series. Whatever it'll be a number, th a number three of this game, who knows? Because, like I think Meadow said earlier, like, where could we go from here? An FPS approach? It would be a first-person shooter if they tried, but what other games could they, you know, mimic? Make their own game? Who knows? I mean, I hope Shiro Games is still going around, and hopefully they'll make a brand new game in this series. But I think this has, again, this has, this has almost perfection for this type of gameplay. And whatever could go from here, I think they could make wonders out of the next story. Make it as detailed and great as it usual be. But that is it, folks. That is our playthrough. That is it. That is Evil Land 2 Revisit. All done. As for the YouTube exit, thank you for watching. And what games will be coming forth in the future? Who knows? It is the start of 2023, and what will be there? Well, you're just going to have to watch the next playthrough, whatever it comes to be. But until then, I'll see you around for a another round and another year of Let's Plays here on the YouTube channel. See you guys then. Ta-ta for now.